Mamaru Penguin Drum is a series created from a hodgepodge of seemingly unrelated ideas and references. Its influences range from the 1980s animated children's film, Night on the Galactic Railroad, to the story of Adam and Eve, to the 1995 Tokyo Sarin Gas Attack. Its topics include capitalist critiques, the meaning of family, the destructive and redemptive power of love, and, well, penguins. With all these different ideas, Penguin Drum could easily come off as a distended mess. But luckily, series director Kunihiku Ikuhara's singular vision somehow manages to bring these ideas together and form them into one cohesive whole. Much has been written about the various references and influences which make up Penguin Drum, and their specific relevance to the show. But today, I want to look at something a little different. We'll be discussing why the series is constructed from these disparate parts, and the various ways Ikuhara uses multiplicity to reinforce the messages of Penguin Drum. If you haven't seen Penguin Drum, then I really do encourage you not to watch this video, and instead to go watch the series. But if you really gotta stick around, or if you haven't seen Penguin Drum in a long time, then you can pause the video and read this brief synopsis that I wrote. I had it in the video, but it took way too much time because Penguin Drum is a hard series to summarize. I think that the key to understanding it, though, is Curry. Curry appears many times throughout Penguin Drum. Characters cook curry throughout the show, and it is especially important to Ringo. Its first major appearance is in episode 3, Then Devour Me Courageously. This episode contains many themes and ideas which are important to the series. Ringo's family celebrates Curry Day on the 20th of each month as a way to reinforce their family's bond. As Ringo says, curry eaten with the people you love tastes like happiness. For Ringo, curry represents love, and Penguin Drum is perhaps a story about love above all else. The 20th of March, 1995 marks the day Ringo was born, as well as the day Momoka was killed by the terrorist group Kiga. After the loss of Momoka, Ringo's parents agreed to pour all the love they had for Momoka into Ringo, and Curry Day serves as a method for them to forget the suffering they experienced after Momoka's death. By the time the series takes place, Ringo's family has drifted apart, and Curry Day goes unobserved, until Ringo takes it upon herself to eat curry with Tabuki, as foretold in her sister's diary. The idea of cycles and the transfer of fate is displayed in how Ringo is born on the same day that Momoka died, and how Ringo's obsession with Tabuki is an attempt to replace Momoka. When Ringo's plan to eat with Tabuki is foiled by his fiancée Yuri, Ringo swaps out the curry that they were going to eat with her own and sneaks out the back door. Heading home, she has an unfortunate run-in with Hamari and ends up heading to the Takakura's house to celebrate curry day with them. Ringo's love for her family leads her to try to love Tabuki, since she believes that, if she can live out Momoka's life as predicted in her diary, she will restore her family to its former wholesomeness. However, Ringo's love ends up causing some trouble for Tabuki and Yuri, as she throws out the curry Yuri had already made and burns her own hands in the process. This is contrasted with the pleasant scene of Ringo and the Takakuras eating curry together, demonstrating the ways love can cause us to hurt others and ourselves as well as the sweeter, more traditional side of love. Ringo, celebrating curry day with the Takakuras instead of her own family, demonstrates the breakdown of the traditional family and its replacement by more unconventional relationships. Lastly, the curries made in this episode all include apples, which are one of the most important symbols in the show. Apples represent the fruit of fate, as well as love and sacrifice. They refer to the biblical story of Adam and Eve and the concept of original sin, as well as the subversion of this story in the film Night on the Galactic Railroad, which we'll get to later. This density of meanings is emblematic of Ikuhara's directorial style, but more than that, it ties in with one of the show's core ideas. A cohesive whole can be formed from disparate parts. Curry is a dish created from mixing many different types of food into one, as the show goes on, we will learn that the Takakura children are not related to each other by blood, 
and are only united by their love and sacrifice for each other. Likewise, the glamorous actress and secret sadist Yuri and the depressive school teacher Tabuki form a family based on their past experiences, and Shoma and Ringo eventually learn to love each other despite the fact that Shoma's parents caused Momoka's death. These characters are able to form relationships and overcome their differences despite society's judgment to form a singular unit or family, much like a curry takes disparate ingredients to create one dish. Curry is often made with leftover food, since practically anything can be put into it. Similarly, all these characters have been discarded or ignored by society and their biological families for various reasons and find a new meaning and purpose in each other. Now, not only can these characters be seen as coming together to form one cohesive whole, but the show itself can be seen in a similar way. Penguin Drum uses wildly different tones, symbols, and references to convey its meaning. The multiplicity in its own structure is used to reinforce the idea, presented in the story, that we can overcome our differences and form our own bonds and families in spite of the conventions and judgments of society. To explore this, let's look at some specific ways Penguin Drum uses multiplicity to convey its messages, starting with the title. Mawaru can be translated into English as spinning or rolling while the kanji used to spell the title is read as wheel. Translating the title then gives spinning penguin drum or wheel penguin drum. At first, this title seems to be a meaningless mishmash of words, but each of its three root words bears meaning on the series. Spinning or rolling refers to the cycle of fate, which is name dropped many times in the series. Throughout the show, the eponymous penguin drum, the children's heart so to speak, is split up recombined, and transferred between all three of the main cast in a cycle. This cycle of fate, where the children all take turns saving each other, makes up the main plot of the series. The subways, which feature so prominently, go through a repeating cycle of following the routes built for them. Structurally, the show begins with two children discussing the apple's appearance in Night on the Galactic Railroad, and ends with Kamba and Shoma reborn as children discussing the same thing leaving the series to end where it began, forming a complete cycle. The idea of repetition and fate comes up so much in the series that I can't possibly cover all of its incarnations here, so we'll move on. The next part of the title, Penguin, refers to the penguins which appear to aid the Takakuras as well as the penguin logos which cover almost every discernible surface. Penguins are an animal caught in in-betweens. They are a bird, but they can't fly. They swim in water, but they can't stay there forever. They are an animal which doesn't neatly fit into any category, much like the characters in Penguin Drum don't fit in with society. While this is a bit more of a stretch, it's possible penguins are associated with family as well, given that they protect their young from the cold and live in large communal groups. The title, as written, is pronounced Pingu, instead of the usual Japanese word for penguin, Pingin. The most common explanation for this is that when read in Chinese, Pinguo translates as apple, so this part of the title is doing double duty, referring to both penguins and the fruit of fate. Lastly, the drum seems to refer to the beating of a heart, and the penguin drum itself represents life, love, and takes physical form as a red sphere in the character's hearts. We see then that the title constructs its own unique meaning by combining different words in a way which appears meaningless at first, making the title itself a microcosm of the show's ideas concerning family and belonging. Now that we've gotten past the title, let's examine how the tone and structure of Penguin Drum use multiplicity. The tone of Mamoru Penguin Drum whiplashes from one extreme to another quite often, which is somewhat of a trademark of Ikuhara's style. There are many comedic elements, most notably the penguins, which are ever-present with the Takakuras. These penguins often do silly things in the background, even when intense drama is happening in the foreground. As the series goes on, the comedy stylings of the earlier episodes are gradually supplanted by much darker themes involving child abuse, terrorism, rape, etc, etc. While the tone does become much darker, 
jokes are present almost up until the very end. Similarly, while the story starts off mostly grounded in reality, it transitions into more and more abstract imagery before the finale, which is completely removed from realism and fully embraces symbolic images. This transition is something Ikuhara had done more than a decade prior in Udina, but it is even more pronounced in Penguin Drum. At the same time the series transitions into darker territory and symbolism, it also relies more and more heavily on flashbacks interspersed with the main narrative. This transition and the clash of tones is one of the most contentious aspects of Penguin Drum, and its effectiveness as a storytelling tool is debatable to say the least. The ever-present comedy penguins are especially contentious, and I can't say that I'm too fond of them myself. However, the focus of this video isn't on where a penguin drum succeeds or fails as an entertaining television program, but rather on the decision-making process which led to its unique blend of flavors. I would argue that, whether you consider the show's tone well executed or not, this decision was deliberately made, and it serves as another example of creating one whole from disparate pieces. The series combines humor with drama, the present with the past, and real-life terrorist acts with extravagant symbolism to create a series unlike any other. For that, I have to give Ikuhara credit. This mix of ideas is also present in Penguin Drum's literary influences. In order to understand Penguin Drum, it is important to understand the various references composited together to create it. This can make Penguin Drum difficult for Western audiences to understand because, while it draws from multiple different cultures, the most prevalent references are to Japanese culture. The two references that I want to discuss here are Night on the Galactic Railroad and Haruki Murakami's book Underground. We'll be discussing each of these works in some depth and how they relate to Penguin Drum individually before pulling the camera back and looking at the larger picture of how these works and the ideas we've discussed so far relate to the show in its entirety. Night on the Galactic Railroad is a novella written by Kenji Miyazawa, published in 1934 and later adapted into an anime movie in 1985. Spoilers for a decades-old story, skip to here if you want to watch the movie or read the book. I highly recommend both. Night on the Galactic Railroad is a story about two boys, Giovanni and Campanella, who go on a dreamlike train ride through the Milky Way. At the end of the story, it is revealed that Campanella actually died while trying to save another boy, Zanelli, from drowning, and that this train takes people to the afterlife. Galactic Railroad is concerned with religion, the nature of happiness, and especially sacrifice. The story of the Scorpion's fire is central to its plot and is referenced by name in Penguin Drum. The story goes like this. A scorpion survives off of killing and eating other bugs. When a weasel attacks him, the scorpion flees by jumping down into a well. At the bottom of the well, the scorpion realizes he is going to drown. He begins to pray. Oh, I can't remember how many living creatures I have killed in my lifetime, but now I found myself trapped by the weasel and running for my own life. Woe is me. Everything is so risky in life. Why didn't I just give my body to the weasel and be done with it? If I had, at least he would have been able to live another day. Dear God, please look into my heart, and in the next life, don't throw away my life in vain like this, but use my body for the good and happiness of all. After this prayer, Scorpion's body burst into flames, and he turned into a beautiful fire lighting the night sky the constellation Scorpio. This story's relevance to Kamba, Ringo, and Shoma should be pretty clear, given that they all make sacrifices in different ways for the sake of others. While all three are motivated by love, Ringo and Shoma sacrifice themselves for the sake of the people they care about, while Kamba sacrifices himself as well as other innocent people in an effort to save Hamari. This difference is why Ringo and Shoma are the ones who burst into flame in the finale, representing the scorpion's fire, while Kamba does not. Instead, Kamba's efforts result in him turning into shards of glass, similar to the children put through the child broiler. In the end, he became just another member of the Kiga group committing violence, and lost his individuality and self-determination. While he sacrificed much, it did not give him the fate he desperately wished for, 
because his sacrifices were fueled by his own ego and neglected not only the strangers he killed, but also the people he loved who wanted him to stop. Another important scene in Railroad is discussed at the beginning and ending of Penguin Drum, the apple scene. The apple is a symbol of original sin in the Judeo-Christian tradition, but here it is given a more positive meaning. The apples are shared by one passenger on the train with the two boys and some other passengers. For Penguin Drum's perspective on the apples, I'll let the characters speak for themselves. Or at least I would if King Records hadn't tried to block this video in all countries for showing a clip. Sorry about the inconvenience. So here's my version. One of the boys says, The apple is the universe itself. It's what connects this world and the world that Campanella and the other passengers are going to. The apple is a reward for those who have chosen love above all else. To which the other boy responds, but everything's over when you're dead. To which the first boy responds to the response, it's not over. That's where everything begins. I'm not following you at all, says boy two. Boy one, I'm talking about love. Don't you get it? Kenji Miyazawa was interested in many different sciences, and the apples can be seen as representing the universe's circular shape. To offer them in reward for choosing love above all else is similar to how God might give the world of heaven to those who do so. The universe is also a place filled with pain, something discussed several times in Railroad. This is tied in with how the fruit of wisdom was responsible for Adam and Eve being forced out of the Garden of Eden and into a world of suffering. But as one passenger on the train describes, so long as you're on the proper road, no matter how trying a thing may be, you'll be getting closer, one step at a time, up and down the mountain to real happiness. Suffering is inextricable from our lives and is a necessary part of the path to happiness. This sentiment is expressed in Penguin Drum by Hamari as she says that even though being chosen by Shoma to escape the child broiler brought her into the cursed Takakura family in a life of suffering, it was worth it in order to experience their happiness together. So while the apple represents love, hope, and generosity, it also means suffering and hardship. Being part of the Takakura family is how the children find belonging and a way to survive, but it also entails being ousted from society for their association to the Kika group. The original sin that their parents committed stays with the children. I should note that, on the whole, Penguin Drum is a relatively secular story as opposed to Railroad, which is explicitly religious. While the Takakura children are ostracized and blamed for the sins of their parents, the series views this as a failing of society and not indicative of any fault of the children themselves. The last thing to notice about the apple is how, in the animated movie, the apples multiply as they are shared. This, to me, seems to represent the idea that love and generosity begets the same, as well as the abundance of God's grace. In Ikuhara's work, the penguin drum splits into multiple pieces and is shared between the Takakuras. At the end, as a reward for sacrificing themselves, the brothers are given a second chance, their own fruits of fate, where before there was only one, similar to the multiplying apples in this scene. Some other quick observations about Galactic Railroad and Penguin Drum. Kamba and Shoma's coloring matches Campanella's and Giovanni's, and the emphasis on the eponymous Galactic Railroad matches the emphasis on subway trains in Penguin Drum. There's more parallels you could draw, and it is a story which deserves a thorough examination in its own right, but I've got to cut it off somewhere. Now for Underground. This is the part of the video I have the most qualms about writing. It's a very serious and non-fictional topic, so I've tried my best to be as well-researched as possible. I don't want to spend too much time discussing it and sidetrack the video completely, but I also want to do the topic some justice and give it the respect it deserves. I apologize if I go too much in either direction. Haruki Murakami's book, Underground, is a non-fiction book published roughly a year after the 1995 Tokyo gas attacks. 
The book consists of interviews with the victims of the attack and was followed a year later by The Place That Was Promised, which consisted of interviews with former members of the Aum Shinrikyo cult. Aum Shinrikyo, meaning Supreme Truth, is a religious group which was formed by a man called Shoko Asahara in the mid-80s. Combining Hindu, Buddhist, and Christian ideas, the group was largely centered around Asahara, who, in the early 90s, declared himself to be Christ, predicting doomsday would occur in 1997 due to a nuclear war between Japan and the United States. Aum was initially a self-improvement and yoga group, but would eventually grow into a massive organization with tens of thousands of members, millions of dollars in revenue, and private facilities in multiple countries. Aum's growth in the 90s was propelled by the Japanese asset price bubble's collapse, which caused a massive economic downturn in Japan whose consequences are still being dealt with today. While the economy collapsed, Japan's work culture remained extremely demanding, though Japanese people saw less and less return for their long hours. Many members of the Aum cult were well-educated young people who were disenchanted with Japanese society at large. Searching for a meaning amidst the destruction of the capitalist ideals of the 80s, they turned to Asahara for direction and guidance. Many became renunciants and broke off all contact with their families and friends to live in Aum facilities, donating their time and money to the organization. As time went on, the group became more and more violent. Asahara justified these actions through his interpretation of Vajrayana Buddhism, which stated that killing sinners before they could continue to sin was actually better for their souls and would raise them up. Of course, only Asahara was wise enough to discern which people needed to be cleansed. By 1995, the cult had been involved in a number of murders and attempted murders of people critical of the cult and had begun manufacturing chemical weapons. Sarin, a potent and deadly neurotoxin which can cause paralysis and blindness, was first used in an attack in 1994, where it was sprayed out of a truck in the Matsumoto district of Yagano, a neighborhood where judges lived who were presiding over a legal case the cult was involved in. Eight people died, and hundreds were injured. As the cult grew more conspicuous, the police planned to raid several Aum facilities in and around Tokyo on March 22, 1995. Asahara, tipped off by cult members in the police force, organized the Tokyo gas attack, which would take place on March 20th, two days before the raid. Asahara hoped that by causing widespread panic in Tokyo, the raid would be delayed. High-level members of the cult were tasked with releasing packets of sarin simultaneously on five separate subway lines during morning rush hour. The members were told that this would hasten the oncoming apocalypse and destroy the impure world surrounding them and that those killed by the cult would also be saved by Asahara and brought into the new world. Ten people were directly involved in the attack, five sarin planters and five getaway drivers. The sarin packets were all released, and the attack resulted in the deaths of a dozen people, the serious injury of 50, and the minor injuries of hundreds more. The Tokyo hospitals were unprepared and unequipped to deal with the sudden influx of patients. Emergency forces were disorganized and slow to respond to the situation, and many victims had to rely on cabs to make it to hospitals, which at first turned them away, unaware of the crisis. The five subways were not shut down immediately when people began to collapse, but instead ran on for one or more stops, which led to even more injuries. News organizations arrived to film the panic while people were collapsed in the street with ambulances failing to arrive. All in all, it was mostly due to luck and incompetence on the part of Aum that so few people were actually killed, as there was the potential for hundreds of deaths if the sarin had been made with more care. As of today, all ten people involved in the attack have been arrested, many of them awaiting the death penalty. As I was making this video, Asahara himself was executed on July 6, 2018, 23 years after the attack. The chaos and panic of the Tokyo gas attack was captured in Murakami's book Underground in his interviews with victims. In the book's conclusion, which was titled, Where Are We Japanese Going? 
Murakami criticized the aspects of Japanese society which led to both the cult's rapid growth as well as the disorganization of the government's emergency response. Murakami wrote that the attack was not a matter of us versus them, or the sane versus the insane, as the media portrayed it, but represented a deeper underlying problem with Japan society as a whole. Many of those interviewed continued to go to work even after being poisoned, locked into their daily routines. The subway workers and hospital staff were unprepared to react quickly to such an occurrence, and instead of taking personal responsibility, allowed things to continue as normal until things truly got out of hand. The media and government were quick to write off the attack as a one-off event done by the insane and failed to confront it as a systemic issue, eager to push off any responsibility. According to Murakami, the members of the cult, who felt lost in Japan's rigid society, sought out a new meaning and social structure and found it in Aum. They subsumed their own egos and personalities to the cult, ultimately replacing the hollow societal narrative with a much more destructive one, but one with no more room for autonomy or individuality than the one which had been replaced. In order to prevent the growth of groups like Aum, Murakami writes that it is imperative that we offer them a more viable narrative, a narrative potent enough to replace the one given by Aum. Otherwise, more groups like Aum will continue to emerge from the underground of Japanese society, the hidden social issues underlying the everyday life people wanted so desperately to return to after the attack. While Murakami offers no such narrative in Underground. One such narrative is presented in Penguin Drum. Penguin Drum makes many of the same critiques of Japan as Murakami did in Underground, and references one of his stories, Super Frog Saves Tokyo, by name. Using a fictionalized version of the Tokyo attack, it draws attention to the way Japanese society both led to the attack and responded to it. Like the real Om cult, the Kiga group's motive is to destroy society so that it can be rebuilt anew as something pure. A key aspect of Penguin Drum is that the Kiga group is not wrong for criticizing society. Social forces are portrayed as a cruel and judgmental thing, most exemplified by the child broiler. The child broiler is the place where society sends unwanted children who are ground up into transparent glass to become see-through people, just like everyone else, with no individual purpose or personality. The children sent here serve no purpose to society, and so are discarded and molded into something useful to that same society which rejected them. The children are not seen as valuable in and of themselves, but only as generic products to be used by the system. The overwhelming sameness of the public drawn as simplified white figures, like you might see on subway signs, is contrasted with the individuality of the cast we follow, and serves as a condemnation of the homogeneity enforced by a strict capitalist structure. However, in attempting to destroy this cruel system, the Kiga group commits atrocities which make them no better than the society they are attempting to replace. The actions of the Kiga group are what set the story and the suffering of its characters in motion. And while their disapproval of society might be justified, their violent reaction to it is not. In attempting to express their distance from the system, they become the very thing they try to destroy. The Kiga group symbol is the penguin, which appears all over the public spaces and products in Tokyo. The Kiga group uses factories and products to disguise its motives, and the penguin logos draw a visual parallel between the consumer society at large and the terrorists. While society has transformed people into faceless copies, the Kiga group all wear identical uniforms and unquestioningly obey their leaders. Society views children and people as products to be sacrificed for a larger good. While the Kiga group is ostensibly motivated by love for people and the desire to give them something better than the current society, they use innocent lives to achieve their goal, foregoing the love which was their original motive. The penguin symbol is associated with Kiga, as well as the capitalist culture at large, to emphasize the similarities between the two, and to identify that the Kiga group 
has not escaped society's influence, but has merely become a dark reflection of it. Even though they might seem completely opposed at first, they are actually two sides of the same coin. While Penguin Drum does criticize the capitalistic culture of Japan, it mostly couches these critiques in terms of family as a stand-in for society. Family is important in all cultures, but especially so in Japan. It is notable that there is hardly any positive portrayal of the traditional family in Penguin Drum. In fact, all the characters we follow have been negatively affected by their biological families. The Takakura children are abandoned by their parents when they go into hiding, and ostracized by the public for the sins of their parents. Ringo's family has split apart, which causes her great distress and leads her to insane lengths to try to reunite her parents. Tabuki's mother only cares about him as a means to produce music, and when he injures himself, she loses interest in him completely. Yuri is abused by her father for not matching up to his expectations of beauty. Masako is ignored and mistreated by her patriarchal grandfather, who denies her the chance to run the family business because she is a girl. The fate of all of these characters is intimately tied up in their families and the society at large which influenced those families. Penguin Drum is making a statement about how the families and cultures we are born into have a huge controlling influence over our lives, and these influences can be extremely negative. Penguin Drum does offer an escape from the influence of family and fate, the bonds of love we form with the people that we care about. And while this is by no means an original message, the way Penguin Drum goes about establishing it is. Through their love for each other, the characters are able to defy the fate laid out for them and to find happiness in each other. The Takakuri children, Shoma and Ringo, and Tabuki and Yuri, all form their own makeshift families, which provide the love they were denied from their own biological families. However, these bonds do not come easily. Penguin Drum positions reciprocal sacrifice as the cornerstone of love. This reciprocal sacrifice is contrasted with the one-sided sacrifice the characters experienced at the hands of their families. While their parents required them to offer themselves, the parents offered little or nothing in return. The children's love for their parents led them down self-destructive paths which hurt themselves and the people around them. The sacrifices which matter and give the characters happiness and meaning are the ones which are returned in kind, and this is the act which allows these different people to become one unique whole. Each of the Takakuras gives up their piece of the penguin drum, their chance at a happy life, for each other. And paradoxically, it is only by giving up their chance at happiness that they are able to find peace. This to me is the most important combination which Penguin Drum makes out of his different pieces. The purest expression of love is to sacrifice yourself and your own happiness for another person. But the love embodied by this act is what makes happiness possible in the cruel world that we live in. By sacrificing for each other, we are able to form a repeating closed circle, a self-sustaining loop, a real loving family, and escape the linear path of fate leading to meaninglessness and death that we are all placed on at birth. We've covered a lot of different ideas here, and to finish, I would like to map it out visually. To me, Penguin Drum is focused around two main concepts, the cycle of fate and love epitomized by sacrifice. These concepts are explored along with their opposites. The cycle of fate is explored as something which exists due to the bonds of family and society, but also something which can be escaped through love. Love and sacrifice are explored as both the means to attain happiness as well as the cause of pain and suffering. All of the symbols and references we discussed relate to these two core ideas. Penguin's dual nature and their uncertain classification connect them to fate, while their nurturing connects them to love. The title contains the word penguin and refers to the cycle of fate and the drum of the heart. Night on the Galactic Railroad relates heavily to the idea of fate, cycles, love, and sacrifice. 
the Tokyo gas attack was an attempt to alter fate and was motivated by a certain perversion of love, which involved much sacrifice. Underground examined the underlying issues of society, which led to, or faded, the attack. The imagery of trains conveys the idea of fate. A train cannot deviate from its tracks and connects Galactic Railroad to the Tokyo gas attack. The use of the apple relates to fate and suffering with its biblical connotation and to love with its appearance in Galactic Railroad. And finally, apple appears in Chinese in the title. It is these myriad connections between seemingly unrelated things which give Penguin Drum its unique flavor and nuance. Each of these ingredients is an important part of the show and informs the surrounding ideas as well as our perception of the entirety. Just as the different ingredients of a curry combine to make one dish, and just as the takakuras find meaning in each other, the disparate pieces of Penguin Drum combine and complement each other to create a unique and cohesive whole. By examining the larger structure of the show and how its influences interact and connect, we are better able to understand the ideas it presents, that what makes us different from each other can also allow us to come together, that just because society might view something as abnormal doesn't mean it can't be meaningful, and that it is our connections to each other that make us who we are. All these different works, ideas, and events transcend multiplicity to take on a new meaning as a single thing. Mawaru Penguin Drum. Thank you so much for watching this really long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Penguin Drum couldn't have been made without its many influences, and I could not have made the script without relying on the work of many other writers. I've compiled a list of the resources which influenced me the most in writing this. You can find it in the description, along with a link to the full text of Nine on the Galactic Railroad. This turned out to be way longer than I anticipated, and I took a lot longer to make it than I should have. But I had a lot of fun exploring Penguin Drum, and I hope you got something out of it. Hope to see you next time.